Hey guys, it's me, Tyler, and welcome back to another episode of After the Run. In this episode, we're going to talk about emotional stress eating, binge eating, and yo-yo dieting. So let's get right into it. Uh, now, if you're new to the podcast, um, I'm glad you're here. This is a, a show where we talk about health and fitness. Uh, if you are not new to the podcast, you know that it's been a while since an episode, and um, you know that the last few episodes... I talked about how I've really been struggling this year with my weight and with my health. And so that's part of the reason there haven't been a lot of episodes is um, just because I've personally been struggling a little bit. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. First, let's just acknowledge that this has been a hard year for everybody. Um, I don't think I'm alone. Um, over the last 15, 16 months, there's been a worldwide pandemic and it's been hard. Um, there's been a lot of stress. There's been a lot of uncertainty in the world. There's been a lot of different um, health considerations and factors. Uh, and I certainly have haven't been immune to that. However, that being said, um, last year, you know, in 2020, um, things started out really great for me, even with the pandemic. So when things started shutting down with the pandemic, um, in, in many ways, things actually got better for me. I'm uh, naturally an introvert. I like being um, at home with my family and with my wife. I like being able to do projects uh, online and I'm very comfortable with technology. And so when school shut down and we went home, um, even though I was working really, really hard, uh, in many ways, my stress level went way down um, and it was really comfortable for me. Um, and so as we started teaching online, I, I normally work really hard as a teacher. I work 50 to 60 hours a week. And, and during the shutdown, I continued to do that. I woke up really early in the morning because I started virtual school assembly uh, to help students. And so working on that, in addition to my teaching responsibilities, um, I was working really hard, but because I was home and I didn't have a commute, I had more time to work on uh, things that I wanted to work on, but I also had more time to pay attention to my health. And so I was getting out running every morning and in actually a lot of evenings as well. I was going walking once or twice a day with my wife and my dog. And so my health was really good. And um, backing up from even before the pandemic in 2018 and 2019, I lost hundred pounds. And, and that's kind of where this health journey started for me. Uh, but from 2019 to 2020, I actually put some weight back on. Now, the good news is it was healthy weight. I put on some muscle uh, and my body fat percentage actually continued to go down. And so I got to the point where, you know, um, in by 20 end of 2019, I was under 20% body fat and I was feeling really good. And then during the pandemic last year, I thought, well, let's take this to the next level. And so I worked really hard over the summer. And by the end of the summer, um, I was down to right around 12%. I was looking like I was going to get some six pack of abs and feeling really good about where things were. Um, my my weight was right around 215 pounds. And so I'd actually lost a little bit of weight over the pandemic. Um, and I was just in a really good shape. Um, but then things started opening back up. Now, I know it didn't open up in most places, but here in Southern Utah, where I'm at, we decided to go back to school face to face. Um, and I wish it was just going back to school face to face like normal, um, but it wasn't. Um, in addition to teaching, uh, in face to face, I had to be prepared to teach online. And so I was doing twice as much preparation. Um, in addition to that, I was also working on additional things to help my students because I knew they were struggling. They had stopped school the year before early. And so they were behind academically. So I started filming more videos for them online to help get them caught up. And in addition to doing that, I was doing my virtual school assembly and giving them resources for their mental health and physical health. And so I was doing extra work, but I was doing it in the same amount of time. I was still only working 50 to 60 hours a week, but, you know, I'd leave to work at five in the morning. I'd get home around five at night. And in those 10 to 12 hours a day, um, it was significantly different than years previous. And the reason for that was students were stressed out. They were on edge and they were more needy. Um, and as a teacher, of course, I want to help them with that. And so I was putting in more emotional effort um, and trying to be there 
and be as present as I could for my students. Um, there were no teaching aids in my classroom or parents helping out. And so I was doing all the grading myself. Plus I was teaching a new curriculum. So there was just a lot more work, but I was literally with my students all day long. A lot of their extra periods, their specials and things like that were either canceled or modified in some way. And so they were spending way more time in the classroom. So I didn't have as much prep period. Um, they did lunch in the classroom. So I didn't have a lunch break. Um, there's no such thing as coffee breaks for teachers. And so I was just from the time the school day started till it ended, I was just really with my students the whole time, either doing whole class instruction or one on one. And it was just exhausting. It really was. And so, you know, when school started up in in mid August, um, that stress level started affecting my health and it affected my sleep and it led to me making some poor choices. Now, um, I started doing emotional eating and that meant on particularly stressful days, I, I would break from my regular healthy lifestyle and I'd eat processed foods or I'd eat junk food or sugar foods and desserts, things like that. And it wasn't uh, in to a huge excess. In fact, from, from August till the end of the year, I, I did gain a little bit of weight. I gained about 10 pounds. Um, but, and it was mostly a result of this added stress and, and emotional eating. Now it wasn't binge eating. And that's a really positive thing for me because binge eating means that you've deprived yourself because you're dieting and you want to eat as much as possible in case you'll never have that food again. Right. And so binge eating often in the past for me, that meant going through a drive through um, on my own in private. So no one would know and throwing away the wrappers before I got home. It meant going to the grocery store and getting things that I would eat during my drive and binge eating often happens in private. Now, at least for the first part of the uh, school year, I wasn't doing that. I was just indulging a little more and increasing my portion sizes. But as the year wore on, um, my guard wore down and what ended up happening is I, I got to the end of the year and my father-in-law passed away uh, due to COVID and students were acting up more than ever and really struggling in school. And I had a lot of issues in my classroom to deal with and in my school to deal with. And my stress level went way up. My, my sleep was really suffering. And I started, I just threw rules out the window, which was really stupid because when you eat poorly, you feel even worse. And so it starts the spiral. And I was certainly part of the spiral. And over just a few months, I gained some serious weight. So um, from January till May, I gained another 25 pounds. You know, so I was putting on almost 10 pounds a month. Um, and it's because I did start doing binge eating. And I started really, um, I, I had some bad habits that, that I went through. And I want to say that I'm human, I make some mistakes, but I was super uh, concerned because when I started my 100 pound weight loss journey back in 2018, one of my biggest concerns was yo-yo dieting. Um, I'd seen on reality shows like The Biggest Loser that often people will do extreme weight loss, but then they'll gain all the weight back and then they'll gain a lot more weight. And I was so worried that that would happen to me. And so um, when I lost weight the first time, I tried to put healthy things into place so that I wasn't dieting, but I was changing my lifestyle. And so I started eating more vegetables. I started eating berries and less other fruits because they were high in natural sugar and would make me crave foods. Um, for the same reason, I gave up flavored water and other flavored drinks, even if they were zero calories, because they made me thirsty or hungry for other foods. And so I started only drinking water. Well, that's one of the silver linings for me through all this. As I gained weight back and I, I got up to 250 pounds uh, by the end of May, but that 250 pounds was still way healthier than the 250 pounds I'd been several years ago because I was still eating a lot of healthy foods. I was just, you know, I was doing some binge eating and I was eating bigger portion sizes and snacking more often. And so I'd fallen into some bad habits, but I was drinking a lot of water. I was eating a lot of vegetables. I was still exercising, maybe not as regularly as I, I should have been, but I was still keeping up with a lot of those things. And so that's kind of the silver linings for me is even at an unhealthy 250 pounds, I had a lot of good things going for me. And so it was easier to set up than 
you know, a reset, uh, which I did on the first day of summer this year saying, all right, for this summer where I have, again, control over my schedule, a lot of those stressors that I had with being in school are away, at least temporarily. And so I'm really going to take advantage of that and get back into a good, healthy routine um, and start exercising more regularly, doing strength training more regularly um, and get rid of sugar, processed foods, um, the things that would make me feel bloated or um, you know, affect my sleep and things like that. And so starting day one of summer, I, I got back into it. And the good news is um, it was way easier this time than the first time around. So that's great. Um, I saw some immediate results and you're going to see that anytime you change your diet, because the bloating and inflammation and the extra water weight that you've held onto, you're going to lose some of that during the beginning. And so I did lose um, quite a few pounds just in that first week or two. Um, but even going on a, a awesome vacation where I did indulge in um, some desserts and things like that, I was able to re um, lose all the weight I gained on vacation within just a few days and get back into this uh, healthy routine. So I'm now in a kind of course correction. I do have the goal and I want to tell you about it because that's one of the things that helped me in my first weight loss journey was being transparent and talking about what's going well and what's not. So my goals for the summer is I want to lose 25 pounds. I want to get from 250 back down to 225, which for me is a pretty healthy place to be. Um, I want to get faster. I want to get stronger. Um, of course, the biggest thing it, it, for me is the diet, and that will come through just eating two meals a day, Monday through Friday. Um, intermittent fasting works really well for me. Um, and so I'm, I'll do that. And then I'll have breakfast with my family on Saturday and Sunday. I'll only drink water and I get rid of snacks almost completely. I, I found that I need to have a little bit of freedom with snacks. And so um, I do snacks twice a week. So um, I can pick which evenings. Typically, that's when I have my snacks and it's usually popcorn. Um, but that's what I'll do. And I'm going to do that for the entire summer. Um, I have other goals as far as productivity and writing and video creation and stuff like that. Um, but I have a good plan going into the summer. We're a few weeks in now and I'm right on uh, target. I, I'm happy that as I uh, started incorporating these things just in the first few weeks, cravings have gone way down. I'm not nearly as hungry as I was when I was eating junk food. Um, and so I'm eating way less, but I'm not as hungry, which is awesome. Um, I'm feeling way better because my exercise is better right now uh, because of my diet. And so um, exercise is exciting. I, I have done more strength training. Um, if you're watching the video, you see that I'm here down in my, um, I don't know what I call this room yet. It's a man cave slash office slash studio. Um, you're seeing the, the exercise part of my room behind me. Um, but in front of me, I've got the office part and I love it down here. So improving this room over the pandemic has certainly been worthwhile, but I've, this is a place where I'm getting a lot of awesome things done and healthy things done. And so I'm grateful to be here. So that's where I'm at. Um, and I'd love to hear how you're doing with uh, your weight loss journey or what you're struggling with when it comes to emotional eating, binging, yo-yo dieting. So go ahead and drop those in the comments um, and good luck with everything. Bye-bye.